Hi everybody, welcome back to The Village Camera Nerd. The Sony ZV-1 is here. The ultimate vlogging camera for YouTubers and social media stars, big and small. Sony's very first flip out screen point and shoot camera is geared for vloggers, but is essentially a modified pro level RX100 series camera that filmmakers can be interested in as well. So is it any good? TLDR, this thing is an amazing vlogging camera and I am so tempted to buy this thing. It is so awesome, man. The image quality, autofocus, pro-level features borrowed from its cousin, and vlogger-friendly design is just amazing. Let's go into the details. Now, I might be a little bit biased, but from the moment I unboxed this thing, I was absolutely impressed with ergonomics. Let's dive into the design. Let's get this out of the way. The $748 MSRP is pretty much for the camera, and it isn't bundled with much of anything at all. You get the camera, a BX1 battery that admittedly isn't super high in capacity, a windscreen and a charging sink cable. Bare, bare bones. For $100 more, you can get a bundle with a vlogger remote control handle tripod thingy, plus a 64 gigabyte SD card. The handle has very convenient buttons and is fully wireless and easily adjustable. It doesn't extend like a selfie stick though, and I find that limiting for composition. So while I would recommend it for vloggers who want quick control and easy placement of the camera, due to that limitation of non-extendability, I wouldn't spend money on it personally. But let's talk about this sexy looking camera. Super lightweight with rounded corners and powdered finish, it's simple and sexy and has a freaking flip out screen. Finally Sony, finally, what took you so long? You can protect the screen by closing it into the body, which makes it less stressful to keep the screen scratch free. Compared to the RX100 series, it's missing a lens dial for focus and aperture control options. It's pretty limited in physical controls and only has one control wheel, so a lot of exposure controls need some extra button pushing. But for vloggers, the auto exposure settings are going to be the most popular anyway. In true Sony fashion, this thing features Zeiss optics for clean and sharp images. The focal length is equivalent to a 24 to 70 lens on the full frame camera. Where the ergonomics get a point off for me is how the quarter 20 mounting point is literally part of the hinge for the battery and car door. Meaning you have to remove anything this thing is mounted on to switch either card or battery. I know that this is not an uncommon problem for cameras this size, but oh my god is it annoying. On first boot up and playing with the thing the first time, it's all of the usual. Instead of a dial for modes however, there is a mode button where you can switch to movie mode where you vloggers will want to spend most of your time. The BX1 battery lasts a decent amount of time, giving 85 minutes of HD recording time and 70 minutes of 4K recording time. Speaking of which, out of the box it limits 4K recording to 5 minutes, which broke my heart. But then from some googling, I learned that you can remove this limitation by changing the temperature shutdown settings from standard to high. And then you could get unlimited 4K recording as long as you have power and card space. And speaking of power, for those who are recording for a long time on a tripod or live streaming, you can get around the battery life limitations by hooking up a USB power pack to its multi slash USB micro port. I tested this and it was like the Energizer Bunny. It just kept going and going and going and going. There is mostly greatness for vloggers in the ergonomics with no absolute deal breakers in design. Now let's look at all the toys they stuffed into this little clown car of features with. Now in no particular order, let's start with the defocus mode which maximizes defocus background for that cool bokehlicious look. This isn't anything that you can't do with some manual settings, but the fact that you could press a single button on top of the camera and it automatically opens up the aperture to the max and adds an ND filter is so super duper convenient. And let's get a pro look with a snap. Tap the button again to choose clear mode, which allows the aperture to close down. This push button approach is great for those who mainly use auto exposure modes. And you can even switch back and forth while you're in the middle of a shot. I don't know why you would want to, but you, you can. Sony also interestingly includes a product showcase mode that is meant for on tripod close up shots of items you want to show off in your vlog. It turns off any digital stabilization and prioritizes macro focusing. It's another cool push button feature mode to help vloggers save time. For the beauty vloggers out there, or those with skin that really needs a little face tuning, like me, Sony added a face tune ish feature called skin softening. It comes in flavors of low, medium, and high. When shooting in 4K, you can't preview the effects on the screen, but hey look, it works. But I wouldn't go any higher than low, because y'all will start looking like Barbie and Ken dolls with a plastic complexion. But to each their own though, if you like it, go for it. 
Not specific to the ZV-1, but is super helpful is the built-in ND filter that helps with shooting in bright situations. You can keep your aperture wide open for some bokeh if you want to manually get some cinematic shots. There's also a built-in intervalometer for time lapses. It doesn't stitch together a video for you in camera though, so you gotta put an image sequence together and post yourself. Another welcome carryover from the RX100 series is the super slow-mo HFR mode. You have a choice of 240, 480, and 960 frames per second for up to 40x slow motion. Though as most slow-mo cameras need to do, it uses less and less of the sensor as you increase frame rate, which causes you to get tighter and tighter shots. And you only get a quick couple of seconds of burst recording time, but the results are pretty damn cool in my book. Now speaking of slow motion, I did my very first mock slash fake vlog test or vlog test of me shaving off my facial hair taking advantage of the high frame rates. Now using all auto settings, let's take a look at how it all turned out. Hi everybody, today I'm gonna shave off my mustache using an internal mic and using standard stabilization so it's nice and wide and I'm gonna be doing a little bit of slow-mo. Let's start with the Norelco one blade first. Starting with 60p and we're tracking my lips. Now 120p. The last shot was accidental shutter priority too high. Okay, here we are. My face is now very naked, very lonely. Uh, it's just fine. Now there is a loss of image quality with high ISOs when you're in high frame rates, but the vlog turned out decently well without any audio or picture sweetening. Now it's time to nerd the hell out. Does the ZV-1 perform in the sharpness category and all resolution and frame rate settings? Hmm. Before we start pixel peeping, it's worth noting that the Zeiss optics on this puppy look to be pretty sharp at all zoom levels, as long as you don't go into digital zoom. It's also worth noting that in 4K resolutions, the sensor is cropped in a little bit, but it isn't that huge of a difference from HD, so I personally don't mind it. But let's answer the question of whether 1080p sucks or not, which is a constant plague of the smaller Sony mirrorless cameras. And zooming in, the answer looks to be yes and no. While it's definitely pretty soft, it's nowhere as bad as the aliasing I noticed in the A6100 review. So compared to the A6000 series, the ZV-1 seems to win on the 1080p quality front. Not great, but not horrible. The point is, I'd use 1080p without cringing that much. If you're out to shoot 60p or 120p, it doesn't look like the image degrades in resolving power as you increase frame rate. I did notice a little bit more compression artifacting though, so do mind that. At 120p, it looks like the full sensor is used, for some reason unknowns to me. Zooming in, it's hard to tell quality difference with the different field of view, but it looks pretty much similar in quality there. So overall, as we would expect from the cousin of the RX100 series, the ZV-1 is a solid performer in video resolving power. Now the ZV-1 has a little something something that was seriously missing on the Sony A6100 that I reviewed. Picture profiles. What is absolutely bonkers in this vlogging camera is that all the picture profiles found on the A7 series of pro cameras are found in the ZV-1. Professionals and those who want more choices in getting great colors straight out of the camera can rejoice. Comparing the six default picture profiles on the landscape-ish image, my favorite is the first in line, which is PP1, Movie Gamma, and Movie Color. The saturation is pleasing and Gamma Curve having a nice contrast without overly crunching. So I recommend shooting movie slash movie. Let's check out skin tones with my ugly, ugly face. PP1 movie slash movie seems to win again for straight out of the camera footage, with the other picture profiles being too crunchy or needing work in post. Now one thing that having picture profile settings allows me to do is to apply EOS HD Pro Color settings. Check out my review of this picture profile through the link in the description below. My very first impression of how these settings work on this camera is that the overall image is darker than I would like. I would want to tweak some settings to brighten it up a bit. The greens do look pretty nice though. On my face, it's also a bit darker than I would like. 
Brightening it up in post helps, but to get it looking good straight out of the camera, I would expose a bit higher by adjusting EV plus two third of a stop or one full stop when shooting auto. For the filmmakers out there that want maximum control, well, there's Log, S-Log 2 and S-Log 3. An 8-bit. Yeah, 8-bit, 420. But I want you to grade the footage and see if it can hold up okay. In the landscape image, S-Log 2 and S-Log 3 surprisingly hold up. It doesn't get too splotchy or stair-steppy. Impressive. On the ugly face, it also seems to hold up okay with minimal splotchiness. I still wouldn't recommend shooting in log on this camera, but if you really, really insist on doing it, just make sure you expose brighter and you'll avoid terrible splotchiness and stair-stepping. So ZV1 gets some pro cred from me, and vloggers should be glad to know that they have some powerful stuff hidden in this camera. Many vloggers doing handheld shots on the go and don't want the audience to vomit from motion sickness will want to pay attention to these tests on the ZV-1's image stabilization settings. There are three stabilization settings which Sony calls Steady Shot. Active, which is optical plus digital stabilization. Standard, which is just optical stabilization. And off. Before we compare the effectiveness of each, it's worth noting that active Steady Shot does crop into the image a notable amount. So if you're looking to get as wide of a shot as possible and have a tripod, go with standard. Zooming in to see if there's an image quality loss with active steady shots crop, there doesn't appear to be, even after adjusting zoom to compensate for scale. So the only notable loss is the tighter image. Comparing each on a zoomed in stationary handheld shot, standard steady shot helps a lot, but is still drifty. Active steady shot works the best in keeping the image still. Now vloggers are often moving, so I tested the steady shot on a walking shot. It's obviously horrible with it off. There is some improvement with standard, but still motion sickness inducing. Active steady shot brings it to an acceptable amount of shake, but this is not nearly as good as the GoPro Hero 7 and 8's super stabilization. Adding warp stabilizer on a standard steady shot shot doesn't quite work very well in this particular case. Only with the active steady shot image does warp stabilizer make it smoother, though a higher shutter speed would help avoid the motion blur. Walking around in selfie mode, active steady shot wasn't magical since it missed stabilizing some major shakes, but it's definitely better than just standard. Bring this thing out into the field and into Costco, active steady shot is at most adequate. Most audiences of vloggers that are on the go are already used to this level of shake. But action sports vloggers should consider a GoPro or even an Insta360 for the most stable image. And hey, if you have a little gimbal to throw this thing on, turn off the steady shot and you are golden. I don't have anything golden to throw here as a prop. Now, one of my favorite features of the Sony mirrorless cameras is their amazing autofocus. Here's my gesture for autofocus. And it only gets better with each generation. Well, guess what? The ZV-1 is no less amazing. From the very moment of unboxing, I can tell Sony did it again with bringing autofocus, speed, and accuracy to the next level. It was hard to hide the smile on my face as I walked towards the camera and away, and I can already see on screen just how awesome the autofocus was keeping up. And zooming in halfway didn't make it perform any less awesome, and I couldn't hide how impressed I was by this thing. The tap on the screen to track an object feature works as you would want it to. I didn't miss a beat as it was moving all around inanimate objects. As long as the feature you're tracking remains on screen and doesn't turn away, it'll keep the thing in focus. Walking around Costco with very messy operation didn't phase the autofocus at all, and how to snap two objects felt as natural as looking with my own eyes. No wasting time waiting for the camera to figure things out. Balls out amazing. Now let's talk about the mic on this thing. Vloggers talk to their audience a lot, and they can't sound like crap, right? The ZV-1 puts a lot of emphasis on an improved mic, but does that mean you get audio that's the best thing since sliced bread? Let's listen! It's worth noting that like other Sony mirrorless cameras, that there is no auto gain, and you have to keep an eye on your audio levels in each situation. The ZV-1 comes with its own windshield dead cat thingy that sheds just like a dead cat, so I want you to test that first. And I'm talking about anything I could think of right now. 
Yeah, my hair looks a little funky because it's a home brewed recipe of a haircut. And I'm just going to be talking about like how uh, my Father's Day lunch was, even though it's not even Father's Day. So. Yep, the thing works as you'd want it to. But let's stress test this mic in noisy environments. Okay, I'm driving my car listening to Game of Thrones in the background. We're seeing how well the audio and stabilization works. Now we're on a very boring drive. I'm just holding this in front of me, and but yet still watching the road. Hope I don't get pulled over by a cop for doing this. Guess where I am. So much bulk goodies. It didn't fare very well in those situations, but let's be fair and compare the internal mic to the Canon G7X Mark III's and the Sony A6100's. This is both a uh, backlighting and an audio test to see how this mic does with all the echo around. All right, this is a test of in-camera mic in a very echoey little corridor in our home over here. So we're gonna see, uh, this is an echoey area test, a very echoey chamber test of the internal camera mic. The ZV-1 comes off as more tinny than the others, with the Canon G7X Mark III having the warmest sound. Thankfully, there is a mic input where we can attach an external mic. I highly recommend getting a smaller shotgun mic than my Video Mic Pro, though. This thing is like putting an elephant on top of a mouse, dude. Now with the mic on, I had to actually, um, it was over attenuated, so I had to go negative 17 on the Video Mic Pro. So to prioritize sound quality, an external mic is a must. The flip out screen makes it totally easy to add audio accessories like the Rode Link Go without blocking the screen. No need to buy a special cage anymore, woot woot. Let's see another fake vlog of my pandemic adventure shopping in Costco to see how the audio, auto exposure, stabilization, and autofocus all come together. Guess where I am. And either again, and one more. Okay, we're going for mushroom, so it's hippie organic. Nice. This is water. Thank you. Need to lay on the head. Which one? Get the fat on the head. But of course, for the lady. Is good? Is it good? To the checkout line, but we're gonna be so broke. Okay, not nearly as bad as I was expecting. Now to be fair, I was talking pretty softly to the mic, so if you're talking really loudly and don't mind getting a bunch of looks, then you know, it, it, it probably might be better. So to answer my original question of whether the internal mic sets a new standard for vloggers is nope. But it's good enough for impromptu moments that don't have a lot of background noise. For everything else, have an external mic choice handy. So what do you think about these tests? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. For me, I think I found in the ZV-1 the perfect vlogging companion that can also slip into my pocket to bring around filming pro B-roll incognito or as a C camera in multicam events. I highly recommend this camera if you have the budget for it because it is 750 bucks. If you decide to buy it, please support this channel by clicking on the link in the description below. And remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to know when more tests with the ZV-1 and other cameras come out. And this is when I trail off to make sure that I have this little globe up here and these little call to actions and stuff right here. Am I holding them? Ho, ho, hover, slide out, slide out. I'm just doing gesture for the live audience. This is just weird. I'm just doing gestures.